What's up, brothers and sisters? Doc Lee's in here, the podcasting beast from the East with the Professor John Guy, the King of RG, the Troll Masters, the Data Analyst, and just a of his own fate. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the Terminator, Mr. Omega. That's Professor Omega to you. That's right, the cleaner. I'm still trying to get over that first thing. I mean, I mean, I am Miro Machine de Podcasting, which is French for the best podcasting machine, least hype machine, and the wise man of our tribal chief. Always tranquilo as we finale this dark side of the ring season three with Doc. L E L O. How are you doing today? Sir? I'm good. Finish this dark side of the ring, the steroid trials, right? Where, like I said, I feel like they should have really ran with that title, right? All sizzle, no steak, all icing, no cake. That should have been in the freaking description of the whole show. I would have skipped everything else and just went with that line because that, sir, was clutch. A lot of interesting things in the show, but I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? I mean, <laughs> this is the perfect example on to why context and truth-seeking is so important, not just in wrestling, not just in the legal system, but doc, a fact of life. I can understand. I can agree with that. And it was kind of weird. Um, the underhanded shenanigans of the DA and the prosecution and well, the FBI investigation. This is why being thorough, due diligence, like all that stuff is so important. And try to it just it just showed how well <laughs> Jerry McDivitt is as a lawyer. <laughs> and honestly, yes, he he was great. But it was such a sloppy I mean, investigation. He, it was like he looked, he looked really good. Mr. McMahon looked really good. Yeah, it, it was just as bad as the game last night between the Giants and the Chiefs. It was just sloppy all around uh, on the uh, po- opposition I side. Would say it was the Knicks against the Raptors, but I'm not going to go. Any Rockets game. That you want to take a look at from this season. Period. <laughs> Period. Uh, but let's no get defense, into the story, Doc. <laughs> what was your initial impression after watching it? Now, this is one that you have some. Yes. Yes. <laughs> frame yes. of reference on. <laughs> oh yes, this one we 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 all know this one. Um, I think this is around the time where I found out that Vince McMahon was the owner. Was the there. owner. Remember, yeah. I think we had that conversation. See him on CNN. And of course, I don't remember the headlines, but I remember seeing him on CNN, and I'm like, "Dad, like, what the heck? Why is he on there? Like, it's still real to me. Damn it, he's a ring announcer. <laughs> you know, uh, that guy's a ring announcer. He's not. You know, he he just says, "Welcome to WrestleMania." Wait, you know, that's wasn't it. Wasn't Jack Tunney the president of the WWF at that time? I believe he was. I don't know, Vince. It was the. Uh, just the ring announcer. I don't know anybody else. I think Gorilla Monsoon might have been there at that point as a figurehead. Um, possibly. That's, that's the only thing I really remember. Like, I really remember Vince really, really just being behind that booth. I don't think he did anything else. Um, and I don't remember. I just was so shocked. Here I am, you know, in no, the early still, 90s. It was still Jack Tunney. He, okay. He, like, he, he stopped being the figurehead around 95, and that's when... Uh, 90, okay. Gorilla, Gorilla took became. over. Yep. And so, yeah. So, I don't think I've ever seen that, that Dooney guy. I don't I don't think I've ever seen 
him. Who, Jack uh, Tunney? Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen yes, Jack you Tunney. You have. You have. Oh, I have. You have. <laughs> I mean, I was like one You're year You're not going to lie to the people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to spell it. Oh, I see it. Um, yeah, I was definitely like one years old, right? I was like massively dying there. Teenager. Just kidding. I wasn't a teenager. <laughs> I was freaking eight. So I wouldn't remember any of those things. I mean, I remember seeing Vince, you know, and again, being an eight year old, <laughs> see a basic man, a ring announcer on TV saying that, you know, his wrestlers don't take steroids or whatever he was talking about. I didn't really care what he was talking about. The, the wool had been pulled from my eyes and kayfabe had died that day. <laughs> um, but let's get back to the story here at hand. Uh, overall, I thought it was sloppy. Um, I thought, you know, the whole thing was messy. The the interrogations were messy. When you put the witnesses on the stands, even somebody like the Ultimate Warrior who loved Vince McMahon, you know, at, at some point in the 90s was like, man, I was taking steroids when Vince McMahon was, you know, following his dad around or so you know whatever he was whatever ultimate warrior would say uh only one person came forward and said that you know Vince McMahon told him to take steroids but that still doesn't you know link him to the things that they were saying that he was doing no it, it began with them just trying to get the doctor right which they should have just stopped right there i mean i know but that they wanted somebody big then but... they got greedy <laughs> yeah the doctor you had the doctor you had the doctor inside, like you, you could have just said, forget it. We don't need anybody else. The doctor is big enough. Cut off the supplier right there. You know, then you can kind of start going after bigger fish later on. Yep. Go after the small fish, let it linger for a while. And then they could have set him out, right? They could have set him out in the future to get some other big fish, but they just were too greedy, too fast. Um, but that doctor was a, uh, ooh. I mean, well, let's get let's get this story started. <laughs> yeah, that doctor man. So we're talking in the beginning here. Obviously, it starts with the lawyer, you know, introducing himself. He's going through, you know, how he's been practicing for thirty years. You know, WWE's attorney for thirty years. Blah blah. blah. Uh, Jim Ross talks about him being the most intelligent man that he had ever met. Even though, like I said, I, I didn't feel like he really needed to do anything. Um, he, I feel like. I really felt like all he had to do was kind of just show up and just he, let. He didn't uh, need to do anything because yeah. there was no, there was no. And it was what I said at the beginning of the show. Context. Yeah. Right. Nothing. <laughs> like there's still show meat up. on these bones for them to nibble on. <laughs> exactly. So then, I mean, the story kind of transitions into you know the WWF that we knew. Obviously, Hogan. You got Warrior. You got you know all these people. Yep. Um, that were huge, Rick Rude, ravishing. Um, you know, you had, um, was it the Warlord, I think it was? Mm -hmm. um, you had a few other wrestlers. I, I, obviously, at that time, were huge. And then they started going over Hulkamania taking over. I think the lawyer was saying that Hulkamania was, you know, just as big as Michael Jordan, you know, which it, I would say it was. Um, Jordan and Hulkamania are, are probably... Pretty much went hand in hand. Yeah, they 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 did. Um, both not Hulk having Mania, you know, the Bulls, Michael Jordan. Um, what else? What else was really really big around that time in the nineties? Um, that's a good question. We would have to come back yeah, we'll, on we'll that. Come back to that. We'll yeah. Come back to that. So yeah. then, of course, the Warlord. You know, he makes his his debut there, um, or not debut, but he talks a little bit. Um, and then you just kind of go over where it kind of starts, and uh, that's where we start with Brian Blair, who was one half of the Killer Bees. Mm -hmm. um, and he got, I mean, this is the part where it became kind of scary for me, because I was sitting there, and I was like, the FBI were opening his packages. Because they were scary. addressed... Okay, so it's terrifying. I'm, no, no, it's, 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 gonna, not, it's not. It's not. For, 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 for it's those, terrifying. For those that want to skip ahead for this next thirty <laughs> seconds, please do so because the Beta Monks friends are not <laughs> legally wow. liable for any decisions that you make. 
But unfortunately, you don't think that's that, terrifying? It's not terrifying, and here's why: it has been going on for decades. That's a problem. Like it in shouldn't fact, be because I thought it, it was a federal offense. That's the thing; it's a fact, federal offense. In fact, it became worse after 9/11. Oh, I'm oh that I believe that I believe. Um, but so that's the part that's, that's the 30 seconds. Welcome back, folks, to the show. If you decide to skip that. 30 seconds because so I don't, I don't you, want people knocking on my door. <laughs> you had, I mean, you had 9 11. Remember, we had the anthrax, we had a whole bunch of things in the mail system. So that, that I get, like, I understand it, but um, I would have never thought, like, I would say, hey, this mail is addressed to this person from the doctor. Why not just go to the person's house and just arrest him on the spot? You know what I'm saying? You know, go through it. You know, it could be nothing or it could be everything that you're looking for. You know what I'm saying? So that's where it's kind of, it was kind of weird and sketchy to me. I, well, I don't like I mean, that. And it turned like out it ended up being everything that they were looking for, unfortunately. <laughs> so in that situation, that's the part where I feel like it shouldn't be viable in court, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, they unless they had a warrant. They had a warrant. And that's the thing about it. They, they, it's like... I believe they might have had a search warrant for the doctor at that point, maybe, but I don't know if they mentioned that part. They obtained the warrant to search the doctor's office. And that's where, as they was packing everything up, that's when they found the picture. Gotcha. Of and him, the Vince McMahon, and Hulk Hogan. That's too much. And that's where they went, light bulb, we can go after a much bigger fish. Terrible idea. Terrible idea. Big fishes have big money. Well, it became done doing it. They kind of looked you know, like geeks at the end, but you know, they 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 took their shot. I got you. So, um, at that time, we have not only um, Brian Blair, but then the weightlifting coach Bill Dunn, who handed over the actual um, supplier, which was Doctor Zorian, right? Yep. Uh, so they flipped on him, and you got wonder, that's when the that's where they got Zoidberg from. A, I don't that'd know. be an insane reference. Right. So somehow the, the word gets down the pipeline here and it, and it falls on Linda McMahon's desk. She says, hey, Vince, man, we got to cut this guy loose, man. He's, he's bad for business. But it's that guy, right? Um, so then no, that's... no, she provided a memo that basically saying we need to cut ties with Zorian. Yeah, that's what I said. Fudge yeah. that guy. Get him out of here. Um, I just said it in less words. Fudge that guy. <laughs> well, people don't understand when you say fudge that guy nah, nah, because nah, you nah, tend nah. to you say know, that know. to nah, a lot nah, of athletes nah, with so many nah, different nah, meetings, nah. okay? And you Doc know dang well what I mean. has layers, folks. <laughs> nah, you know exactly what I mean. So I mean, I knew, but uh, they don't. <laughs> so Brian Blair was given an opportunity to testify against Dr. Zahorian. Um, and, of course, he would because why would you not want to, you know, I guess, clear your name, I guess. Um, so this is where it gets dicey. Well, and also we need to add context behind that. In the 90s, they basically placed a uh, ban on using anabolic steroids. So that's the thing. It's like they did it in the 90s, but it wasn't. It was like. So that was placed in 91. It became yes. a, it was September. It says February twenty seventh, nineteen ninety one. Yes. So it was somewhere between what ninety one and ninety. I guess February twenty eighth in nineteen ninety three um, that this happened. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, this all happened. Like this whole thing started to culminate. I want to say before the ninety two SummerSlam. Exactly. So this is where it gets kind of weird because now you have. You know, these big stars, you got Hogan, again, you got the Warrior, you got some of the other people. And, you know, the FBI is like, well, we want Hogan. And this is the first time I'm going to say this. And I want to, you know, you know what? I'm not going to do it. No, no, I don't no. Want you already put it out there. Technical. I don't want to put it. I don't want a technical. You know what? Um, you, nope. Because this is the finale. You will not get a technical. Okay. It's something completely just okay. unredeemable. The FBI was like, Hogan, we want you all die long. I let it slide. I let it slide. That so, wasn't that. Okay, I didn't think so. So 
I mean, Hogan's like, no, we're not, you know, it's not, we're not sending Hogan. You can just forget about that. You can get Piper. You can get some of these other guys. But you're not Which is crazy that they didn't even get Piper. I know. Uh, I, I thought that was kind of crazy, too. Uh, but obviously, you know, Zahorian found guilty with some of the testimony. Um, and obviously he did it, right? <laughs> he did that. His name um, was on the freaking packages, like. Right, he did. It. You know, there's no question about it. Uh, but it's interesting when they tried to tie in Vince McMahon. I think that's where it went. That's where they went wrong. Uh, trying well, to tie in Vince McMahon. The problem wasn't that. Wrong. The problem wasn't that. The problem was it didn't help out with some of the character witnesses that they brought up. Like the fact that they brought up Nails, who you know, unfortunately, wasn't the brightest you know, knife in the, in the kitchen, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Like that didn't help at all. Uh, and they just kept trying and trying and trying, but like between that, the public ire, people thought this was a work because k <sighs> was still alive. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It all, it, I could see how they would think this is a work. I could see that. Because, I mean, the fact that they were, number one, cheering when he got indicted and then cheering when he, you know, eventually was acquitted, which we'll get to. But cheering, that, that, that's the main part. Like, cheering, you know, go get him, Vince. You know, like, nobody's taking this seriously. Vince is, like, you know, clenching his cheeks. He's not. Like, He's not. <laughs> He's not. He's like, oh, 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 oh. You know, oh, this is gonna be great for ratings, right? <laughs> he's like, he's over here like Jerry, get him. <laughs> right. So obviously, Doctor Zahorian was found guilty. Um, this is when the wellness policy, I guess, was first introduced, that, which we well, laugh at. It today. was after the trial was over. Yeah, yeah, that's what that, that's what. No, no, after the first, after his trial was over. Yes. Dr. Zahorian's trial. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, Dr. yeah, Zahorian's yeah, after his trial. trial. So they, they did this wellness policy, which we laugh which, at today. Which, it's it's even more funnier with some of the stories that came out, you know, within recent years. Right. So, then you have Hulk Hogan on the Arsenio Hall show. That's dating this, of course. Like, insanely <laughs> dating it. Like, all yeah. I can remember is, like, when Macho Man was on that show. What a great mm-hmm. interview. Yeah. Warrior so, was okay, but uh, Hogan, mm-hmm. this was a very infamous. Exactly. So, uh, Hogan <laughs> comes on there and says that he's not a steroid abuser, which, yes. of course, you know, people yes. are like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> and then Vince is like, he was devastated over no, his no, over no, Hogan. this. This jabroni straight up said, I only use it three times in each yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> Injury of the bicep. And and the, to quote that bum yeah. Stephen A. Smith, at the uh, mitigating goal <laughs> to then <laughs> say, if you sit there and you say your prayers and you eat yep. your vitamins, you can come. Just take a little bit of steroids, kids. Ladies and <laughs> That's gentlemen. What he's Ladies and gentlemen, this is why the D.A.R.E. program didn't work. Exactly. Oh, I went there. Exactly. I went oh, there. No, I get it. I get it. Um, but Sorry, Hel- I had to on. go there. I had to go oh, there. God. Sorry. Oh, goodness. I'm not sorry. So Vince McMahon uh, goes ahead and uh, says he was devastated over he the was. fact that Hulk Hogan lied on the SNL Hall show. He was. Um, which of Hogan, course was Hogan wasn't even in WWE around that time. And that's what they're saying, and that's where it gets kind of weird because it's like Hogan's gone. Obviously, they talk about you know transitioning to younger, uh, smaller wrestlers. They, kinda, they, they weren't small. Had to exactly, uh, which they should have been looking to do anyway. Um, with Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, like you said, Mister Perfect, some of those guys. Who I mean, even though they were small, that doesn't necessarily mean they weren't on steroids either. Yeah, I mean, again, you know we have proof of that. <laughs> Exactly. So um, we we literally just had a, a, a episode about that of the Dot of My Kid. Exactly. Um, so we have a few other things where happen where it's kind of giving off that mob slash mafia 
Um, I was wondering if you're going to say that. Yeah, there's a few things that happened. You had, um, what's this guy, Arezzi? I think it was uh, one of the um, yeah, people Arezzi. that asked. Yeah, one of the people that asked a question um, to Vince. He was saying that people well, came to because of what happened during the uh, the, the David Donahue conference. show. No, it was yeah, the David he's, Donahue show. Oh, okay, he was because because like, Vince it, said uh, something. Well, he asked Vince said he was something, devastated, and then Vince claimed that he wasn't devastated, but then Meltzer, right. yes, who was also on this show, <laughs> right. second like, time, this right? Is, this is wrestling dirt sheet, you mm-hmm. know. And then trash reporting, all culminating yep. in this episode. All culminating, yep. Because the other guy was like, "Yeah, I just write stuff," and you know, <laughs> I'm like, "What?" <laughs> yes. But anyway, so this guy says, you know, two guys came and told his mom that you know, I don't believe that. The, by the way, you're living in the wrong neighborhood. I don't believe that. By the way, <laughs> somebody else saying that Vince McMahon paid people to have him followed, and I, I don't believe uh, that. <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot going on. Um, let's see. James there's there's a few things right. in this episode that I don't think is right, but we'll get there. Right. Uh, so then we kind of, after we get that, obviously that's when we get the Hulk Hogan split from the WWE. Not, yeah, it was in 93. Um, and after uh, Mania 9, that mm-hmm. complete cluster. So then we finally get to the point where Vince McMahon is indicted, like I told you. And then, you know, again, the cheers. Uh, so the part about the neck brace. Can we talk about the neck brace? This, uh, is where, fact, this is where, you know, some 20, 30 years later, people are calling this whole thing a work. A work. Because and the fact that he said baby face sympathy. Yes. <laughs> was like, oh, my God. Like, what the heck? But what was he wrong, act. though? No, he was absolutely right. Vince knew exactly what he was doing. Vince he said, oh, was able he... to work the public. And yeah. when you work the public, it has an impact when it comes to delegation. I know people yeah. don't like to hear that, especially in 2021, where public opinion holds way more weight <laughs> when it comes to a lot of things that's been going on. Right. So much so that I think it rules their lives more than them ruling their own life, which is actually kind of sad. Is that besides the point? Right. So then, Mr. McDevitts, because he represented Hogan at the Zahorian trial, they thought it would be a conflict of interest to represent both WWE. Oh, and no, WWF. it was completely a conflict of interest. <laughs> it was completely a conflict of he would have had to perjure himself and he wouldn't have been there to provide his ex which is why I say like this whole episode was more about like how brilliant he is as a legal advisor and as a lawyer. The fact that he was able to come up with a strategy to still be mm-hmm. up there to be part of the defense. But not have to say anything. But not have to say anything was absolutely genius. Yeah. And I mean, when Hogan was up there, kind of, I mean, not when he was uh, before, when he was representing Hulk Hogan, the fact that he was saying, you know, my client's trying to have kids, he has some things going on with his wife, it would be against medical whatever for him to go up there. Yeah, he got, he, he got Hogan <laughs> to not testify during the Zahorian trial. Which is fantastic. That's why I didn't think it would be a conflict of interest, because he really didn't say anything. Nope, it's a conflict you of know? interest, though. It is it is a conflict of interest. So the strategy. So they bring in Laura Brevetti, who's a former federal prosecutor, right? And then he represents the WWE as an organization. Yep. He represents Perfect. the shield while she uh represents the man. Right. So Brevetti cross examines Hogan so that they could use McDevitt's prior representation to knock him out of the case to where he wouldn't be able to say anything else, right? Is what we're saying here, conflict of interest, which is perfect. Yep. So as the Horian testifies against McMahon, they say that he's for 44 days, he's pushed from cell to cell with violent and dangerous offenders. Uh, and then pretty much every whatever amount of days they come in and say, hey, um, 
Didn't you have a conversation with Vince McMahon about steroids? Did you give Vince McMahon some steroids? Did Vince McMahon ever tell you to give someone steroids? Did Vince McMahon ever tell you to give steroids? What do you want from me? Yeah, exactly. I want exactly. the truth. You can't handle you the truth. You can't cancel the truth. <laughs> uh, so Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan and uh, pretty much a slew of other people pretty much say no, except for one person. Um, what was that guy's name? He he came in with like a big jumpsuit, and he was saying that. Vince yeah, that was nails. That's what I was talking about. Nails. Okay, I, not I don't the sharpest knife. <laughs> not, the, yeah. not the sharpest knife. Must, at all. Did he have a different name at that time? Or that was it. No, no, that was his wrestling name. Gotcha. Okay, because I was like, okay, I never even. I don't yeah, it really him. doesn't matter what his actual name is. Like <laughs> it right. just, it was just stupid. So at uh, the final, the finalema, as you would, would so uh, eloquently say, is McDevitt came to the actual steroid itself, Onivore, and said that the FDA was supposed to remove this drug from the market. And did they move that drug from the market, Judge? You have to answer honestly. Come on, Judge, give them the truth. Give them the truth, Judge. Say no, it, say it now, say it. And then the fact that's that a, he That's said, a shout out to um, <laughs> back to school, Rodney Dangerfield. I love that moment. Right, and the fact that Sean O'Shea is saying, no, Judge, don't say it. Because <laughs> everything was gonna deem from that. Like, even if they right. had a case, the fact that it wasn't it wasn't deemed unfit for human consumption by the FDA right. just right. threw everything away. Facts. So due diligence. And now we went back yeah. in full circle, folks. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so then the verdict comes out. Of course, the, the jury is like, ah, we want to know it. Yeah, we want to see it. Is it supposed to be, you know, removed from the market? It wasn't. Mm, that's kind of a shady business practice. Obviously, Vince McMahon has been found not guilty. WWF slash WWE found not guilty. The courtroom goes crazy with applause. Um, and as Mr. McDevitt like said, I did not Mr. McMahon ever gotten at that point. Right. I did not spend one minute of my time thinking about losing, which I'm gonna yeah. take to I'm gonna take that this weekend. <laughs> I'm gonna take that and use that this weekend. Well, I'm pretty sure now after this episode, a lot of people are, you know, trying to find out if he has to be written any books. True. That's true. That's a good one, yeah. Um, but that's the season finale. I mean, it was a great season of Dark Side of the Ring. Um, I think there are plenty more stories to tell. Um, overall, I thought this was a very good ending uh to the to the season. You know, usually it's like, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure. But now this is a good ending. The steroid trial is one of the bigger stories uh, in wrestling because this really shaped wrestling Since. present, past, and future. Because it's like, yep. if Vince McMahon goes to jail, like, which would be an interesting, like, you know, Tweet. alter. Yeah, like you, you, you go back and you put Vince McMahon in jail. Like, I would be curious to see. If WCW takes, you know, a, 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 you know, or ECW or somebody takes off, you know, um, but that would be an interesting story to to tell. But that's for another story. But Johnny, I know that people heard this podcast on their favorite podcast platform, but if they didn't, they can always go to our website at www.debateamongstfriends.com to review this episode as well as all the previous. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as we go over that Monday night. To- Buckle between the New York football giants and the Kansas City Chiefs, as well as the trade deadline rumors. I guess at that point, it'll be breaking news, and then it'll just be old news. But be sure to tune in tomorrow for that news, the analysis, and you know it, the reads. If you want to be a baby face, just wear a neck brace. Thank you.